Hello friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today I want to introduce you to what I think is the, uh, the simplest and yet very, very workable sump that I'm going to be using under the 300 gallon. And so uh, without further ado, let's get into it. This is a 40 gallon, a 40 gallon uh, breeder. And what's gonna happen is the water is gonna come cascading into it right here. Just two simple uh, tubes. You're gonna have two simple pipes coming down in here. There's gonna be a third overflow pipe going into this section over here uh, near the middle. And that pipe never gets used unless you have a blockage in your, in your overflow box. But the two pipes are gonna go below the water line so they'll probably come down to about right here, and that way they'll be submerged and there'll be very little noise. Uh, there'll be no splashing going on. I'm gonna be using a Heiger uh, heater inside the sump, and the water is going to flow through these three uh, sponges, rather. These are uh, matten sponges, or you, sometimes people refer to them as porret sponges from uh, Swiss tropicals very high quality sponges these things are going to last forever and uh, they you can only imagine how much beneficial bacteria these sponges can actually harbor the sponges that i'm using the uh, porridge sponges from uh, swiss tropicals that i'm using in the 210 gallon down here in the sump that's under this tank that's keeping this tank nice and clean those sponges haven't been touched since uh, since this tank was set up. So uh, uh, really there's no need to mess with them unless they're blocked. And you'll know that they're blocked if the water is flowing over them. So there's several inches here on top, right in here. And so if the water ever starts to flow over them, you know that there's blockage. But uh, the water level will more than likely stay about right here at all times. And then when the pump is, is turned off uh, it, and the tank drains a bit, it'll probably come up to about within an inch of the top or two inches of the top and uh, just give me a safe margin. So the water will come into this one section here and then we'll, we'll go through these three sponges, which are, I believe, um, 20, 20, and 10 with regards to to how uh, coarse they are. And then the water will cascade over this mountain of Sara and Siporex. This is Sara Siporex. The folks at Sara sent me the amount that they feel is right. And it's a whole box. You can see it here, a whole box of this stuff. Quite a big box. And I've heard very, very good things about this, about this uh, substrate and apparently it's a lot more than just ceramic ri rings there's there's uh, more uh, more to it than just that so i put it in mesh bags three very large bagfuls and then the water will then simply get pumped back up to the two corners of the tank with these uh with these two ciche synchro silent these are synchro silent pumps that are going to be connected to braided uh, vinyl tubing and that really minimizes any vibration or noise and that is the extent of it that's how simple this sump is going to be nothing really complicated now if you need um, you know you need a skimmer or uh, you know you want to have a, uh, a compartment in your sump where you're growing plants and other other things uh, you might uh, not be able to go with this design now, if I add anything to this sump, it's going to be a, uh, maybe an algae scrubber. I've been speaking with the folks at Santa Monica Filtration, and I could very easily attach an algae scrubber right here to this section of the sump. And so I can attach it right there, and then I could harvest that algae and feed it to the fish. They love it as a snack, and it would help to, uh, to control 
nitrates and uh, you know adds oxygen, reduces nitrates. It's just you know reduces ammonia. Algae is a, a great thing when you can when you can actually uh, harvest it and and harness it that way. Fish are wondering what the heck's going on. This might be the sump in your new tank. I haven't decided if the African cichlids are going to be going into the 300 or if the 300 is going to be for South Americans. We'll see. I'm still working on it. My first obstacle is to get the tank set up and running and then I'll worry about the substrate and the decor and ultimately what, what fish are going to go into the tank. So uh, there you have it. The most uh, simple simple sump imaginable and uh, but I assure you between those four inch wide 14 inch high sponges that mountain of Siporex uh, media and a, um, a deep substrate like I normally like to run there this is going to be ultimately after probably about I'd say about six months this uh, is going to be a very, very stable, stable situation. So what do you think? Share your comments below and we can talk about this and a whole lot more at the Saturday Cichlids and Coffee live stream. Great group of fish keepers get together and we talk about all things related to fish. And um, for those of you who'd like to support the channel, consider becoming a Patreon for as little as $3 a month. You can really help, help uh, keep, this, uh, keep this garage going and keep all the projects rolling. All right, thank you for tuning in my friends. You are appreciated and stay tuned. I'll be getting this under the aquarium and we'll get that aquarium full, give it a water test and make sure everything works the way it's supposed to. The water circulates and there are no leaks and then we'll go ahead and drain it and, uh, put, some, uh, and put some substrate decor and ultimately decide what fish are gonna go into the 300. All right, thank you for tuning in. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.